Grana Baby today is September the 2nd. The story is A Long Walk. Our teacher, Mrs. Chalk, she took us for a walk. We marched all day around the bay and didn't get home till dark. Oh, that's so cute. Alright, so, our last story that we read was Thumbelina. This is a sorcerer's apprentice. And there's no photos. A man found himself in need of a helper for his workshop. And one day, as he was walking along the outskirts of a little... helmet he met a boy who was carrying a bundle slung over his shoulder stopping him the man said good morning my lad i am looking for an apprentice for my shop have you a master no said the boy i have just this morning said Goodbye to my mother, and now off to find myself a tree. Good, said the man. You look as though you might be just the lad I need. But wait, do you have any, do you know anything about reading or white or writing? Oh, yes, said the boy. Too bad, said the man. You won't do after all. I have no use for an apprentice who is able to read and write. Pardon me, said the boy. If it was reading and writing you were talking about, I misunderstood you. I thought you asked if I knew anything about eating and fighting. Those two things I'm able to do well. But as to reading and writing, and writing, those are things I know nothing about. Well, cried the man, then you are just the fellow I want. Come with me to my workshop and I shall show you what to do. The boy, however, he had his wits about him. He could read and write well enough and had only pretended to be a fool, wondering why a man should prefer to have an unschooled helper. He thought to himself, I smell a rat. There is something strange about all of this business and I had better keep my eyes and ears open. Well, he was pondering over this his new master was leading him into the heart of a deep forest. Here is a small clearing, stood a house, and as soon as they entered it, the boy could see this is no ordinary workshop. At one end of a big room was a huge hearth with a copper cauldron hanging in it. So the hearth is the stove, baby. It's just a huge stove with wood underneath it with a cauldron hanging from it like you saw at the one house when we went to the historic sites. So that's how this man is cooking. At the other end was a small alcove lining, lined with many big books. And from the ceiling there hung a huge many toothed fish. A moiter, a pistol stood on the floor, bottles and sieves, measuring scales, and oddly shaped glassware were strewn about on the table. Well, it did not take the clever young apprentice very long to realize that he was working for a magician or sorcerer of some kind, and so although he pretended to be Quite not so smart, he kept his eyes and ears open and tried to learn all he could. Sorcery, this is a trade. I would dearly love to master, said the boy to himself. 
a mouthful of good chance and charms would never come amiss to a poor fellow like me. And with them I might even be able to do some good in the world. There were many things the boy had to do. Sometimes he was ordered to stir the evil-smelling broths, which bubbled in a big copper cauldron. At other times he had to grind up herbs and berries, and many things too gruesome to mention. In the big mortar and pistol, it was able you know, it was also his task to sweep up the workplace to keep the fire go, to keep the fire burning on the big hearth and to gather the strange materials needed by the man for the broths and the brews he was always mixing. This went on day after day week after week and month after month until the boy was almost beside himself with curiosity he was most curious about the thick heavy books in the alcoves he often how often he had wondered about them and how many times he had been tempted to take a peep between two between their covers but remembering that he was not supposed to know how to read or write he had been wise enough never to show the least interest in them. At last there came a day when he made up his mind to see what was in them no matter what the risk. I'll try it before another day dawns, he thought. That, he, that night he waited until the sorcerer was sound asleep and snoring loudly in his bedchamber. Then creeping out of his straw coach, the boy took a light into the corner of the alcove and began paging through one of the heavy volumes. What was written in them had never been told, but they were conjuring books, each and every one of them. And from time to time, from that time on, the boy read them silently, secretly, for an hour or two, night after night. In this way, he learned many magic tricks, chants, and charms, and counter charms, recipes for fillers and potions, for broths and brews, and witches, straws, sign mystic, and C-A-B-A-L-I-S-T-I-C. -I Cabalistic and Cabalistic, and other helpful spells of many kinds. The boy memorized all these tricks of the magician carefully, and it was not long before he sometime was able to figure out what kind of charms his master was working, what brand of potion he was mixing, what sort of straws he was brewing, and what kind of charms and, potion, and potions and stews they were. Also, they were all wicked ones. Now the boy knew that he was not working for an ordinary magician, but for a cruel, dangerous sorcerer. And because of this, the boy made a plan, a bold one. He went on with his nightly studies until his head was swarming with magic recipes and incant incantations. He even had time to work at them during the day, for the sorcerer sometimes left the shop for hours, working harm and havoc on mortals, no doubt. At such times, the boy would try out a few bits of his newly learned wisdom. He began with simple things such as changing a cat into a bee and back again to the cat making a, a viper out of the po out of the poker so a viper is a snake so making a snake out of the poker the poker is for the fireplace it's a little poker you poke the, the things with the wood pieces with to make the fire move and make the wood move an imp out of a broom and so on sometimes he was successful but often he was not so the boy said to himself this time is not this the time is not yet right not long after the sorcerer again went forth 
on one of his mysterious trips, the boy hurried through his work and had just settled down with a large conjuring book on his knee when the master returned unexpectedly. The boy, thinking fast, pointed, smiling at a few of the pictures, after which he quietly closed the book and went on his way and went on with his work, although nothing was amiss. But the sorcerer was not deceived. If the wretch can read, he thought, he may learn how to outwit me. And I can't send him off with a beating and a bad speed to you either. Doubtless he knows too much already and will reveal all my fine mean tricks. And then I can't have any more sport working mischief on men and beasts. He acted quickly with one leap. He rushed at the boy who in turn made a spring for the door. Stop, cried the sorcerer. You shall not escape from me. He was about to grab the boy by the collar when the quick-witted lad mumbled a powerful incantation by which he changed himself into a bird and whoosh! He had flown into the woods. The sorcerer, not to be outdone, shouted a charm, thus changing himself into a larger bird, and whoosh, he went after the little one. With another incantation, the boy changed himself into a fish, and whoosh, he was swimming across the big pond, but the master was equal to this, for he, a f for with a few words, he made himself into a fish too a big one, and swam after the little one. At this, the boy changed himself into a still bigger fish, but the magician, by the master stroke, turned himself into a tiny kernel of grain and rolled into a small crack in a stone where the fish can't touch him. Quickly, the boy changed himself into a rooster and, oh no, look at the little boy. He's down there reading his book. Roosters can't swim. And peck, 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 with his sharp beak, he snapped at the kernel of grain and ate it up. Oh boy, I guess they were out of the water. That was the end of the Wicked Sorcerer, and the boy became the owner of the magic workshop. And wasn't it fine that all the powers and incantations which had been used for evil by the sorcerer were now in the hands of a boy who would use them for only good? The good of man and beast. All right, baby. That was the story for today for the 2nd of September. Let's do some songs. Oh, say, say, your playmate, come out and play with me. And bring your dollies three, climb up my apple tree, shout down my rain barrel, slide down my cellar door. And we'll be jolly friends forever more, more, more. Oh, say, say, oh, playmates, I cannot come out and play with you. My dolly's got the flu. Boo hoo 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 hoo. I ain't got no rain barrel. I ain't got no cellar door. But we'll be jolly friends forever more, more, more. Karina, baby, that song is special to me because your papa used to listen to that song over and over on repeat on a little charm um, ma a music box that his mother had in, in her bedroom when he was sick and alone by himself. He would go into his mother's bedroom when he was little and rewind that song on the charm on the charm little uh, music box and listen to that song over and over again, just the tune of it. Oh, say, say, oh, play me. Come out and play with me, and bring your dollies three. Climb up my apple tree, shout down my rain barrel, slide down my cellar door, and we'll be jolly friends forever more, more, more. Oh, say, say, oh, playmate, I cannot come out and play with you. My dollies got the flu, boo hoo 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 hoo. I ain't got no rain barrel, I ain't got no cellar door, but we'll be jolly friends forever more, more, more. That song was written a long time ago when the flu came out, 
and this poor little girl is up in her bedroom and she has the flu herself and she can't go out and play because she's afraid that her friend will get it and she can't she's not going to be existing any longer she's going to be up in heaven but she wants her friend to know that no matter what she's going to be friends with her friend right Baby, I know I'm not there beside you right here and right now. Trust me, I know. You know. We all know. I'm not there beside you right here right now. Oh, baby. Your mama needed papa. More than anything, anyone. I needed you and I needed your papa to be okay. As long as your papa's okay, you work outside the home, you can pay all the bills, and you'll be okay. Women as women will sacrifice anything for their child if they think it's for the greater good in that moment and sometimes they don't know that that moment is going to last a lot longer than they think i thought it was going to be a day i thought maybe four days max <laughs> i had no idea i'm sorry i didn't abandon you I wanted to be with you every second of your life. I'd never abandon you. Mama just doesn't do certain things. Mama doesn't work outside the home, baby, and I'm sorry. I don't. I just can't. But I can wait for this court stuff to open up. And we can get through this COVID thing. And we can... We can get back to each other, baby, I promise. Your papa could only have so much control for so long. And I'm sorry. We gave him everything. I gave him everything. I waited forever for you, too. I waited forever for you. And I love you. I will always love you, Karina. I will always love you. You know, Mama's going places and doing things, but Mama's not with the one person that she wants to be with, with you, Lily. I'm not with your papa, I'm not with you, I'm not with the person or with the people that I want to be with. So, like, yeah, I'm trying to just pass the time. But I miss you, God, I miss you. It's just not with the right group of people that I would want to be with. A very blessed baby. Mama has a roof over her head. Mama's very, very blessed. I'm not talking about like where I live, my home. I'm talking about like just places I go and things I do. I'm trying to just pass the time. I just help out. Just do whatever it is that I can do to help out. Karina, baby, I love you and I miss you so much. Life is hard, baby, and it's not fair. It's never going to be fair. Don't ever think that life is going to be fair, and just because you get a bad go of it doesn't mean that you give up. It means that you keep going the next step forward. Your grandfather taught me so much just by him being sick and watching him deteriorate, really, he deteriorated right in front of my eyes for a couple of years there. And it was really 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 hard that was the hardest thing that was one of the hardest things i've ever been through in my entire life to watch someone that i love so much deteriorate in front of me you're not deteriorating karina you're doing amazing and i just have to wait to get back to you i have to keep everything in perspective i always do logical practical and functional that's how you live your life what's logical practical and functional that's the only reason my mom got in trouble. It was logical, practical, and functional. I don't work outside the home. I'm not going to work outside the home. Like, I'm not going to do it. It's logical, practical, and functional for me to protect Papa. No matter what. I'm sorry. I am sorry. But I love you. Always know that I love you. And I miss you. All right, let's do Oh Say Say Oh Playmate one more time. Oh Say Say Oh Playmate, come out and play with me. And bring your dollies three, climb up my apple tree, shout down my rain barrel, slide down my cellar door, 
and we'll be jolly friends forevermore, more, more. Oh, say, say, oh, playmates, I cannot come out and play with you. My dolly's got the flu, boo hoo 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 hoo. I ain't got no rainbow, I ain't got no cellar door, but we'll be jolly friends forevermore, more, more. That's why I love the nursery rhymes and the lullabies. You can see right in that song that life isn't fair. It's not going to be fair. But no matter what, take everything in stride and you have to keep moving forward. Never give up. Never quit. I don't care what you're going through. You never give up. You never quit. Every single cell in your body is fighting to be here and stay alive. You have to fight to be here and stay alive too. You have universes inside of you you don't even know about. Fight to stay alive too. I love you. I love you immensely. I love you so incredibly much, baby. I've always loved you. I will always love you. Let's do Lila Toe, baby. Lila Toe. And good night to you. Lila Toe. May your dreams come true. We sing Lila Toe. May Israel protect you throughout the night until we reach the morning light. Freda, baby, just know that you are loved and you are thought about and you are cared for no matter what. Mom even got you some new toys tonight. I got you a bunny rabbit and a monkey. And, you know, you have so much stuff here. It's unbelievable. You have so much stuff here. I love you and I miss you. I love I love you so much. I miss you so much. I love you, baby. I love you. Good night.